we're just testing some lights right yes. now. <laughs> You're not awkward under the table anymore. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. What's up? How are you? Great, how you doing? Good. Welcome to the proverbial couch. Yes. It's your couch, but it's our couch. It's another you. couch. <laughs> Um, so welcome back to the podcast. I am here with Bobby Danga. What's up? Um, we met at the gym, I don't know, like two years ago, a year ago, two yeah, years ago. Yeah, it's like two years ago. Something like that. Yeah. Um, how long have you been in Canada now? It's, oh man, I'm coming to like six and a half years now. And, uh, do you like it here? I knew I loved Canada the second day I was in the country. <laughs> I was like walking around Vancouver, it was like a beautiful sunny day. What a typical Australian. In December. <laughs> and the, the warmest jacket that I owned was like a spring jacket that I wear now jogging, so. But you know what, like, <laughs> I have to say, like, just living in other parts of Canada, uh, Vancouver does not have what I would classify as real Canadian winter. Oh yeah? No. Yeah. Um, it does not get as cold here as every other part of Canada. I will give you an example. I flew home from Toronto one year, and uh, my parents live in, in Calgary, Alberta, uh, when they live in Canada, and they live in Vietnam the other part of the, the year. And I was flying home from Toronto, it was minus 28 when I left Toronto, yeah. and it was minus 35 when I got to Calgary, and we were colder than Siberia. My gosh. At that part. So, <laughs> yeah. when I moved out here, I'm like, this place is paradise. Yeah. You there's know. palm trees. There's, yeah, there's palm trees on a beach in Canada. So many beaches. Yeah. You can ski <laughs> and surf on the same. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I can resonate with that story because I actually experienced like my real first like Canadian winter in Toronto yeah. in February, like this February a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. I was like walking down the street and I turn a corner and you know how windy it gets in Toronto, yeah, right? Yeah. Me being from BC, not prepared, wasn't wearing a toque, <laughs> got hit with a gust of wind. This first time I ever got like, a brain freeze from <laughs> from wind. So I was like, alright, now I'm in a real Canadian winter. So. But that's the thing, like <laughs> until you experience like Canadian winter, yeah. you don't really know. No. But yeah. I still love it, it's awesome. No, that's that's so 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 good. And so we met doing CrossFit. Yes. Um I mean, you are quite an athletic guy. Um, what did you Thanks. do before? All right, so sports always been a big part of my life. Yeah. Um, grew up in Australia. I was actually born and raised in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Moved to Australia when I was 11. Um, and when I was a kid, I always loved rugby. Rugby league, because rugby league is a national sport in Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And when I went to boarding school in Australia, I um, played rugby union. Um, and that's when I first played proper rugby union in a team with a referee, everything, and like the first, I remember my first game, um, adrenaline was pumping, like I was 11 years old, and uh, I was hooked ever since. So my background was, rugby was my predominant sport in school, um, did a lot of track and field, um, specifically 100 meter hurdles, um, sorry, 100 meter sprints, and then hurdles and long jump, mm -hmm. um, but hurdles was like my favorite track and field event, and volleyball, just like a lot of sports in my time. Um. I did not know about the track and field part. I knew about rugby. Yeah. Track and um, field was like my main sport. Yeah. Um, I also <laughs> did hurdles, and it was yeah. my favorite thing. Right. And um, when I was growing up, and and rugby is what most people know me for. Yeah. And um, how did you get into CrossFit? Okay, so I missed. So when I finished high school, I stopped playing rugby and any competitive sport. I just focused on studying and like, you know, I just sport kind of fell to the side. But I always trained and then still like weightlifting and just trying to stay fit. Um, then when I got to Canada, because CrossFit wasn't so big in Australia, but in North America it's massive. Yeah. Um, came to Canada, found a really good CrossFit gym, but the thing I, want, I wanted to do CrossFit, it was that I wanted to compete again. Mm -hmm. But compete in a cool, awesome environment with like cool people. Mm -hmm. And CrossFit had all the elements, because for me, I didn't want to get injured playing rugby, I knew that I was going to injure myself in some, some way. So for me, I was like, it's a recreational sport, I don't want to hurt myself. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a really unique environment at the gym that we train oh, at. Yeah. <laughs> and I say that because it's not, you know, CrossFit, it's big in our gym and we are an official affiliate. Um, but the gym is so much more than that. Like it encompasses a lot of different people and 
you know, people that go there for a lot of different reasons. And I find that a lot of times, um, you know, I didn't really drink the CrossFit, the CrossFit Kool-Aid per se, because right. I am still a rugby player. Yeah. Like that, that is... That's your thing. That's my thing. Yeah, you know, but what I do appreciate about it is the community aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, how important do you think community is um, when you're kind of doing anything, whether it's motivating yourself to make positive changes, yeah. motivating yourself to, you know, either get back into fitness, get started on your fitness journey? Like, how important do you think having like a good and solid community yeah. is? Community is so so important it's the cornerstone of for me anyway it's been the cornerstone of all my life mm-hmm. um specifically if i'm talking about sport what i learned from a really young age is um how important like your teammates will, will be in your journey yeah. especially when you're like i'm thinking back to my first rugby game i was 11 i barely knew the rules um but i had a solid team that was there to get me through that i wanted to do something but unless I had some a team behind me to help me go through that, then there was no way that I was going to get to you know finish out a whole game. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward into like any aspects of your life, like in terms of motivation and doing things that will push you outside of your comfort zone. I mean, I can think of like so many different examples from my life of having a solid support network that got me through a lot of things. And like me being in Canada right now is a is a result of having awesome people around me to forced me to take that step because they knew I had a dream of, you know, wanting to live in Canada, which I think is an awesome, incredible country and that's your best about moving. But I'm also super tight with my family mm-hmm. in Australia and Australia's a, a long way away. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had my family supporting me, I had friends supporting me, so in short I think community and people around you are definitely the cornerstone. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I noticed in the last like year you have branched out to try a lot of different things. Yeah. Bodybuilding is one of those yeah. things. Um, tell us a little bit more about yeah. that. Okay, so you rarely ever see, okay, so there's a, there's a thing between bodybuilding and crossfitters. Yeah. Like the two polar offices. And for me, I was always like, if I see something that's polar opposite and, and people will say like, there's no way that anyone's going to be doing that, then that's something that I'll put my hand up and just be like, I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so my first um, men's men's physique competition, because you have bodybuilding, which are like the super jack dudes, and then you have uh, men's physique, which you wear board shorts. We will really insert different. photo here All right. for you guys to well, see. My first competition, yeah, the first competition <laughs> was uh, last year, the INBF um, Naturals in Vancouver. Um, and it was actually four weeks after the CrossFit Open. So while I was doing the CrossFit Open, I was prepping for a men's physique competition. And when you prepare for a men's physique competition, you're like cutting your calories, you're yeah. not eating much, your training is completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you're reaching the tail end, you're like super fatigued and tired. But I was doing the CrossFit Open at the same time. As a CrossFitter, you gotta be getting your calories in, lifting a lot of weights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the two training methods were very polar opposite, but uh, it was an awesome experience. Placed third in the first time that I ever got on stage. I was super awkward. I didn't know how to pose <laughs> at all. Had to get a spray tan. Never had a spray tan before, which was amazing. <laughs> um, but it was just a lot of fun, and it was like another thing that if I didn't have supportive people around me, I wouldn't have never have done it. So, um, how were you able to kind of balance, um, kind of caloric intake? maintaining that cardio engine yeah. not being fatigued with deficit training that you would need to prep for like a physique show yeah it was it was tough it was really tough uh diet was a really really big thing i had to really watch what i was eating um training i was still doing crossfit in the mornings and then at night i would do men's physique, bodybuilding sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And the timing of when I was eating was really, really key. So I knew that if I was gonna go in and start you know, lifting when I'm cutting calories all throughout the day, I had to eat within a short window, right. which was like just before, like probably about 45 minutes before I, I started training. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody's body's different, so it took a lot of experimenting, but to manage my energy levels, it was a lot of it came down to eating and drinking a lot of water hydrating. 
and what was really, really important for me in terms of supplements was just making sure that I was on point with getting as much vitamins as I could possibly get. So mm -hmm. my omegas, green drinks, like everything I had. 5-HTP for my mood, like I'm just trying to think of everything that I took. Like, I had a lot of vitamins, so yeah. To cut it short, vitamins and diet and hydration were the key to get me through that point. Would you do it again? Yeah, I would actually do it again, yeah. Yeah? yeah. I took a year off this year, but I might do it again next year. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't get scarred from this experience? No. Um, no, I think it's really awesome when, you know, people kind of branch out of out of their comfort zones, out of things that they kind of know, and experiment, you know, with a whole host of, of different things. They're sort of related, yeah. they're sort of not related, yeah. um, but I think a lot of the mentality is, is very similar. And, you know, like when I was growing up playing rugby, um, a lot of times it is getting out of those, those comfort zones. Um, Absolutely. You know, and, and trying new things, and, and like you alluded to before, it's a lot of teamwork, it's a lot of community, it's a lot of support. And while I haven't like fully drank the CrossFit Kool Aid, I'm just not big enough to compete. Um, at you know at this at this point, but what I what I really do love about it is that community aspect. Yeah. It's cultivating you know friendships that you may not make otherwise because you know, we're kind of from all different Absolutely. walks of life. Yeah. And sometimes there's just not an avenue where you would naturally meet. Yeah. Right? Um, you've been working on a lot of different projects as well. Um, yeah. Uh, what are you working on these days? Yeah. Um, I just launched my passion project. Yeah. Um, which is a podcast. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. Podcast. <laughs> yes. Um, podcast is called Your Hidden Talent. Um, and it's all about, I interview the most inspiring athletes, entrepreneurs, professionals, anybody that's out there chasing their dreams. And yeah. the whole goal of it is to share their story and lessons to inspire you, <laughs> the audience, anyone who resonates with that message to go out and do that thing that lights them up. Because a lot of the times it's like our fears, our insecurities, the doubt that we have within ourselves will hold us back from even stepping outside to do something that really matters to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. um, and the biggest limiting factor in our lives and the biggest thing that's going to hold us back is our own voice in our own head. Mm -hmm. It's not what people say or, or think about you, it's what you think people will say and think about you that will hold you back from doing whatever it is that you need to do. Right. Do you think that that's a more kind of like prevalent, you know, thing in our society with kind of the explosion of how accessible media, information, imagery, and that sort of stuff is? I think it's a double-edged sword. Um, there is a lot of information out there, like so much, so much data, so much content, um, and you just gotta be really selective about what you wanna absorb and what you wanna take on. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of it is that it allows us the opportunity to sort of shape ourselves, shape our mindset, shape um, what path we're going to take in life. Um, you can easily search, if you're ever feeling down, just jump on YouTube and then search motivational video quotes. There'll be something in there that resonates with you. The, on the other side is that there's a lot of negative stuff out there as well. But you just got to be very conscious of that and when you're, and I, I call it like conscious streaming. Mm -hmm. So when you're on social media, it's easy to just go through it and unconsciously flick through news feeds, flick through like, you know, Google, whatever is popping up and then absorbing it. Mm -hmm. But if you're conscious of what you want and you go in with intention, I think it can be really, really powerful and serve you. How do you stay motivated? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, I'm a massive, massive believer in um, have daily habits um, and priming yourself every single day. Um, at the start of the day. So for me, I have a morning routine. Mm -hmm. I wake up early in the morning before the gym, so usually about 4, 4.30. Um, meditation keeps you grounded to what, you know, conscious of your feelings of what the emotions go through your head, but it also I visualize a lot of, in terms of the type of person that I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, I want to visualize the type of life that I want to have, the feelings that I want to create, the impact I want to have on people, uh, 
and it doesn't have to be a massive thing, it's just a small thing, right. but that is what keeps me motivated. It's, it's a, something that's greater than myself, um, because I found that every time that, and I learned this through my adolescent years in my early 20s, the more that I focused on myself, the more stress and anxiety stacked up on me. And my older years, and the reason why I started the podcast was all about serving other people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about me anymore. And that's the thing that I found that drove me and motivated me to serve other people. I remember us chatting about um, podcasts like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, because you are on my fashion project currently. Hey, yes, and, I love it. You know, and it's it's an avenue like one of the reasons why i chose to do this avenue and, and yeah. maybe you'll you'll be able to relate to it is it allows to deeper dive into slightly more serious topics not that none of my other platforms are serious or can be serious mm -hmm. but this is like really a chance to kind of like sit down and really deep dive into stuff um do you find that in, in kind of doing so that you have a better understanding of how to serve the purpose of what you want to accomplish? Yeah, I think for, for me it's like an ongoing process of like the ongoing learning process. I mean, um, I do the podcast to learn off other people mm -hmm. and I, I, I firmly believe that every single person that we come in contact with um, has something to teach us and we have something to teach them. I think that uh, if we go in with that sort of intention to just serve other people, um, then every single interaction that you have with somebody is, you know, going to develop you in some sort of way. Yeah. Did, that's, that, did that touch you on a question? Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> yeah I think so. Um, I, I also noticed that you're out in nature a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, like when we're not working, <laughs> yes. you know, when we're not being corporate slaves. Yeah. Uh, you're out in nature a lot. Um, Obviously, we live in a very like beautiful, you know, corner of, of the world. But yeah, um, you know, what is it about being out in the wilderness and being kind of like essentially in the middle of nowhere? Yeah. Um, you know, like walk me through. Like, what does what does that? What do? goes through my mind yeah, when like, I'm in nature? Yeah. yeah. Like, what, what what goes through there? What does it do for you? How do, you know? It must recharge and energize you in yeah. a way that not being in it doesn't serve. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, for me being out in the, like the most remote places, like uh, White Horse for example, a trip did White Horse, um, being out in just isolation I find is like a deeply spiritual experience for me. Mm -hmm. There's something about just being out and I always catch myself and just look at like a tree, for example, <laughs> something that we would just walk past. But then I'll look at a tree and I just actually acknowledge the tree for what it actually is. So if you think about it, if you go into a forest yeah. and you look at the landscape of the forest, you'll see like so much diversity in there. And if you ever want to know what, what the universal the nature of values, it's diversity. There's so many different plants in there, so many different different animals, but also what the beautiful thing about it is that you see a full life cycle. Right. You'll look at the, the, the forest floor and it's from tr old trees that have died. And then you see new trees sprouting out of that. So you see a full life cycle and for me just like sitting there and looking at something as simple as a tree, even though it's not simple, mm -hmm. um, but it just, I find it's a deeply spiritual thing. It's like, it's awesome. And then even, I can go even deeper. And these are the things that go through my head. It just, I, I'm literally like walking through the wilderness in, in awe or everything. I will look at soil, for example. Yeah. <laughs> soil is just like dirt in, in a lot of people's minds. But if you think about actually what soil is, mm -hmm. how soil can actually be the, the catalyst to grow plants in life. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you can plant food in, so, if, in soil and it pops out like corn. Yeah. For example, <laughs> like how does it even, how does that even happen? It just blows my mind, so that is why I go into nature. I go into nature to have my mind blown by, 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 by nature. nature. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's a, it's a mind blowing experience. It's just like super spiritual. I love it. Um, do you find that you solo trek a lot, or 
or is it an experience that is best shared for you with mm -hmm. other people? Um, I love sharing the experience with other people, um, and then when I'm out there, mm -hmm. I'll take the opportunity always to try and get my own time out there and just be out in the, in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alone. And what has been the most profound thing that you've learned? That I've learned? Mm -hmm. Ooh, good question. Um, I have, in, in the wilderness, I mean? Just whether that's through your experience being out in the wilderness by yourself, yeah. or from trying something new, mm. pushing yourself, basically pushing yourself out of your own comfortable boundaries, whatever those boundaries have been. Yeah. What's the most profound thing that you've been able to take away? Yeah. It's a really good question. I think, uh, I think that we limit ourselves a lot and we're capable of much more than we think we are. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times we'll overthink things and not take that step to do something and you realize like once you do take the step, it's not as bad as you think it is. But um, the beautiful thing about us as a human species is that you can, you can learn whatever skill you want to learn mm -hmm. if you dedicate yourself to it. You can recreate you know, the impact that you're having on people and the type of person that you show up to be in a, in a second, in an instant. It's just a decision you just got to make. You, whatever's happened in your past doesn't have to carry forward and detect the future. Mm -hmm. You can change and make a decision at any moment to create whatever path you want in life. It's very deep. I mean, deep. We're, we're going, we're going <laughs> deep here, but uh, you know, I, I love it. Yeah. Um, what has been the most challenging thing for you as you move through the different parts of your life and as you mm -hmm. experience new things and you, you grow? Like, what has been the most challenging thing? Yeah, uh, I think for me it was it was being open and being I guess being vulnerable, mm -hmm. um, being willing to talk about things that emotional things in my life that I have never really shared with people. So a whole part of the reason why I started my podcast was um, an avenue for that, right? Because I know that. Um, in guys in particular, I'm going to stereotype here, but in my social circle of guys, yeah, um, there's a stigma around like guys being vulnerable and talking about like their emotions and how they're feeling, right? Um, and I feel, and for me, I found that those times where I've been closed off to those around me, the people I love, and just showing up with that kind of like a mask, yeah, and not being my true authentic self, that held me back from so many things in life. Um, and the more that we're sort of willing and 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 wanting to, I would say once, because it's really hard to do this, to be open and vulnerable and just share right. how you're actually feeling in a moment. Um, I find like that has been the most challenging part, but through that challenge, it's also been the most freeing thing for me. So That's amazing. Um, you know, I definitely relate, and, and I can totally resonate, because I think, you know, there's a lot of times when, you know, we're scared to be vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, nobody really likes to be hurt or feel like they can be. Um, and so if you put out the most vulnerable parts of yourself, you're kind of exposing a part of yourself that can be hurt by others, whether it's, you know, willing or, or not mm -hmm. willing. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a scary thing, right? Totally. Um, yeah. At least for me anyway, I don't know about other people, it's a scary, it's, scary. it's yeah. a scary thing to kind of like put yourself out there and be like, I'm okay with people thinking whatever they're going to think because yep. this is actually who I am. Yep. It's not a mask and you're not masquerading around as anything. You're just actually just being you. That's it, yeah. And, um, then, and in doing so, you just step into who you were created to be. Yeah. Like, and, and then that's, I feel, the reason why I find it so freeing is that you just actually just get to just be you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the best parts of you should come out, right? Like there's so much beauty inside every single person. Yeah. It'd be a shame for the world not to see who you really, really are. Yeah, I think so. I mean, even just at our gym, we got some interesting characters. Coaches and fellow, you know, gym goers alike. Yes. Um but I but I think that's one of the places where people feel like they can be completely mm -hmm. themselves. Like, yeah. you know when you're at work 
you know, there's a professional sort of standard. Absolutely. You can't just, you know, there's a certain poise that you have to have. There's a certain kind of speak, if you will. Yep. Um, a certain level of professionalism. Not everybody abides to that, but generally, like, there's a kind of overarching yeah. sort of... There's like a role you got to play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas when you're in spaces like, you know, gyms, <clears throat> team environments, and things like that, uh, there's a little bit less of a how you ought to be. Yeah. And you're kind of free to be just who you are to just be. Um, and I think it's I think it's really refreshing and I think it's really nice. Yeah. Um, because you actually get to see people and you actually get to know them as individuals rather than, oh, you're so and so and this is what you do for work because exactly. I only know you in a professional yeah. and a, setting. Yeah, and it's, it's something that we naturally do is just like People get labels attached to somebody, and they just got to kind of put pigeonhole in just in a general sense. So if you were take a really typical example at a party, yeah, um, you go by yourself, you don't know anybody. Yeah, one of the first things that someone will ask you, making small talks, like, "Oh, what do you do?" Yeah, and then from there, there's already a label that's kind of attached. But something that we were just speaking about off camera is that the beautiful thing about the gym is that. We've had minimal conversations about what people do on the, as a profession, and yeah. you just actually get to know the person that you you're talking to, and they're being themselves, you're being yourself, and the result of that is just like an awesome, awesome vibe and like awesome relationships, awesome workout experience. And the thing about CrossFit is like you can go into some really dark pain caves yep. in the middle of this intense <laughs> workout you're doing a hero ward like Murph for example oh the worst you're just getting <laughs> crushed by a workout for me I'm not a long distance runner in like one mile it even seems like a long run for me especially with a weight vest but yeah. you have another guy next to you who's going through the same thing mm -hmm. um, and it's no there's no there's no bullshit there's no label there's no like I'm an accountant that guy's a doctor yeah. it's just two guys working out yeah. just getting crushed by a water or you just get crush it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you believe the people watching out there yeah. that we're bean counters? We're both counters. Like actually, legit bean counters. Did not know that. <laughs> um, you would never guess. Would never guess. I mean, and that's the thing about stereotypes. That's the thing about perceptions. Um, I remember, I think this was last Christmas, maybe the Christmas before actually. Uh, we were all over at Justin's for dinner, and Brad couldn't stay, him and Nathan had like a movie date. Right. You know, one of their typical bro dates. Yeah. Brad, calling you out, man. <laughs> When's our bro date? I mean, you made me a sandwich, and you named it after me, but I'm waiting. It's my bro date, dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we're just, we're waiting, we're waiting over here. Um, but I remember, you know, this was at a point where we really didn't know each other very well. Um, he never asked me what I did, he always asked, what do you love to do? Awesome. And I think it's really interesting because it's, like you said, like usually when you don't know somebody very well, the the kind of first inclination you have for small talk is like, what do you do for work? Yeah. Like, what do you actually do? Yeah. Um, what Brad alluded to, which I think is is, you know, extremely prevalent is if you're trying to get to know somebody, you know, you ask them the things that they love to do, things that they're yeah. passionate about. And then once you know them a little bit, then you can ask the nuances of like, hey, like, what do you actually do to like afford a roof over your head and food on the table? Yeah. You know, but it's it's interesting when you actually find out what people's passions are. Yeah. Um, because if you were to just meet somebody and it's like, oh, you're an engineer, oh, you're an accountant, oh, you're a doctor, like initially you have stereotypes and a lot of them are societal stereotypes that may or may not fit who the, the person actually is. Sometimes mm -hmm. it actually is true. I know some accountants that are um, they're very quiet, they're very introverted, they're very shy people yeah. um, and they chose that profession because they're like I don't really have to talk to anybody yeah. if, I, if I don't want to. Like, it's not, it's not a, a typical people facing profession. Right. Whereas I know guys that go into sales, it's because they love dealing with people. And then I also know people that go into sales, they just happen to be good at it. But dealing with people like that, 
gives them immense amounts of anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and and so you can never really Absolutely. kind of know um, what those stereotypes are. And, and I think our gym is a prime example of a lot of people breaking out of their kind of stereotypical molds, if you yeah. will, because a lot of us really are just like, hey, like you're the guy that works out at 6.15 yeah. at the same time as me, and I see you yeah. five days a week. Yeah. Eventually you get to know them, yeah. right? Um, what has been the most rewarding experience for you so far? Mm. <clears throat> I think, okay, so my job is pretty full on. Yeah. I'm an accountant. Um, and I have a team and when you're on the clock, like you're on the clock, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of, a lot of deadlines. And what I found rewarding was that that in my life caused like a, in the past caused like a lot of stress and anxiety. Sometimes stress and anxiety creeps up from day to day. Um, what I found rewarding was that going through that struggle, that anxiety, that pain, it actually pushed me towards a, a place where I had to go inside and be really present mm -hmm. um, and start like meditating. And I found that through meditation and being present, really rewarding thing that came out of that was being able to just be connected. It's gonna sound super like very spiritual right now, but like <laughs> being connected with um, just with everything around you, like to other people around you. I love animals mm -hmm. and being like, I found that what is really rewarding is like actually patting a dog. You can't see the dog. There's right a dog now. always sleeping by behind me. There's a dog but, back there. Yes. <laughs> a really rewarding thing is like actually just feeling connected to like all living things. Mm -hmm. That's why I love nature. That's why I love animals. That's why I love interacting with people. That's why I love talking about emotions. The things that really matter is because of what I found really rewarding is just connecting. It sounds super cheesy and spiritual, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> you know what? Like, we're having real moments. This podcast is about real moments. Yeah. You know, the raw, emotional, real moments. And I like it when, you know, it's, it's taken me a very long time to be comfortable enough with being kind of raw and just like out there. Yeah. Um, I am a very private person by nature. Um, so a lot of times when you look at things on, especially in, in the digital media space, we're putting out there what we want people to see. And I have a very kind of, not a narrow window of what, what people want to see, yeah. but I'm very edited in the parts mm -hmm. of my life that, yeah. that are seen because I am extremely private by nature, even though there's a lot of my life that's out there yeah. publicly. Sure. But parts, parts of the things that I talk about, either in the articles I write or the videos I make or even things like this podcast episode, it's learning to get out of those kind of uncomfortable places and being okay with being vulnerable and being a bit more raw. Yeah. Um, it's taken a really, really long time for me to get to that point. Um, has it been something that's come easily to you or has it been a journey that's had a bit of struggle? Yeah, um, it definitely hasn't come easy. And there's, there's definitely like a lot of room for me to grow into it, um, for sure. Um, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I always talk about, um, I use the analogy, sorry, of, you know, growth comes outside of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? And there's always gonna be a point, I feel that there's always a, a you might call it critical mass or a point where there's just gonna be so much pain at some point that will force a shift in, in you. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, uh, even like if you wanna use training as an example, you will push through a pain barrier, but on the other side of that uh, is a new level of fitness, right? Mm -hmm. So emotionally, like, I found that going through pain and struggle was never, not easy for me emotionally to go through that, but mm -hmm. I knew that there was a point where I just had to push through in order for me to grow. Because there was no way that I wanted to live in that place of pain. Right. Yeah. Um, have you ever had any setbacks in your life that has changed you in a profound sort of way? 
Yeah, I would say probably a couple of years ago, um, I completely lost myself in terms of uh, I lost passion for life. <laughs> I lost uh, passion for what what to do. Like every day, I would wake up and just it was like kind of a struggle to just sort of get through the day. Mm -hmm. um, I was to the point where I was like pretty depressed, um, and it really started affecting all parts of my life. Like from key areas of my life that through my whole life I held very highly and very important being like my fitness and health, yeah. um, my relationships um, and my commitment to my craft which is what I do for like my work yeah. um, and all the things that I've, I'm passionate about doing like uh, I, I play the guitar, mm -hmm. so I'm playing the guitar. So I became a shell of who I actually am today and that was something that was like probably a really painful sort of moment for myself. Was there anything that has helped you move past that? I know yeah. um, every person's a little bit different and you know every every everyone that has ever struggled with any sort of uh, mental health issues, um, myself included, you know it's uh, it can be a kind of like long road to get back to you know, the path that you were on, sure. or at least in a more positive way. Um, what, what helped you kind of like mm. move, move past and move through? Yeah. I, a lot of, uh, a lot of time just going in like introspective mm -hmm. and, and like, again, like I, I had a very profound moment where I was, um, I was like meditating. Mm -hmm. Um, and started meditating on like things I was grateful for and just meditating on my life and like why I was feeling a certain way and there was just this, this profound moment where I, I had like a just insane overwhelming feeling of joy that sort of hit me and like to, almost to the point where it was to the point actually where I just bawled out my eyes and, and I was like crying uncontrollably tears of joy mm -hmm. um, and from that I, I, I sort of stepped back and was like wow that was really weird but then something in my head clicked and I was like there was nothing external to me that changed. I'm still, I was in my bedroom, I was sitting on the floor meditating, but yet I still experienced like such an intense level of joy, something that I hadn't sp like, ever experienced in my life. Realized then at that moment that there was nothing external that was ever gonna happen that was gonna bring me that level of joy. And that level of joy and happiness and fulfillment is available to all of us um, at any moment um, as we connect to it and if we just have the right sort of like emotional space for it um, and you sort of open to just allowing that to come through you mm -hmm. if that sort of makes sense like um, I, I was sort of in a space where I was so goal oriented and driven to achieve things outside of me where I thought that was going to bring me happiness and joy right um, but I still managed to feel more intense happiness without having any of that and that's when that moment clicked for me that we are the creators of of our life and creators of our destiny and happiness and joy is available to us at any time. What is the thing that brings you the most amount of joy yeah. right now? Right now? Right now. Man, look outside, look around <laughs> you, look around you. Um, I am I am blown away by uh, just, <laughs> this is going to sound super spiritual again, but like, I'm blown away <laughs> by like how much <coughs> infinite intelligence there is around us. Mm -hmm. And I say infinite intelligence where I can look up and I'll see clouds <laughs> rolling past and I think about the scientific thing about what a cloud is. Yeah. Um, and it's our most precious resource, water, floating in the sky that rains on us and gives life to everything around us. So small things like that is what gives me so much joy. I love it. I love it. It's crazy. I, I'm, I'm kind of like, people will be like, do you like have a unicorn at the back that you ride on like you <laughs> day and just like float on a, on a blue butt. We hit him <laughs> out there. Yeah. You know. But seriously that's just hiding. <laughs> that's what that's what brings me joy. <laughs> seriously, that's what brings me joy. Which I think is really great because I think, you know, our society is so fast paced now. People are doing more things, they're going to more places, they're experiencing so many things. And there's so much kind of material stuff out there 
yeah. that is sold to you, advertised that it's gonna, mm -hmm. you know, bring you joy. Yeah. When really, if you strip away all of those material things, um, it really takes some introspective, you know, moments to kind of like look around and be like, you know what, like this is what brings me joy. Like when I look outside right now, it's not raining. We live in a <laughs> yes. city that rains a lot. The sun. And it's not raining and it's sunny out and it's great. Yes. And that is something that makes me super happy because it's depressing here for a good chunk of the winter when it's just gray and dreary out. So to have days that are super sunny, yeah. super awesome. Waking up and, you know, the mornings lately for me have been a bit of a struggle. Have they? I've been a little bit tired lately. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been working long hours and, you know, just, just in kind of like internal stresses, we're doing a huge implementation project at work right now. Uh, which comes with a whole host of, of different things. People are pulling you in a lot of sometimes conflicting directions. <clears throat> and, you know, and it, the rugby season just ended and we won the Provincial Cup. Yes, congrats. Thank you very much. Um, you know, but I mean, that's, there's a lot of emotion and stress that yeah. comes when you're like final match day. That's a whole year and season's worth of hard work that comes down in like one moment. So it's been a little stressful lately, mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes in the morning, like, the alarm goes off and the struggle is very, very, very real. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> but then I think to myself, I don't want to be shamed on social media by my training partners for not going, because <laughs> I shame, I shame oh, them. Yes. They'll shame me. Accountability. Back. You know, it's it's accountability for one, and the second thing is, because you know that some of your best buds are going to be just, they're there with you in those suffering moments at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Doing the same terrible thing as you. Yeah. And then afterwards you're just like, okay, that wasn't so bad. Because I didn't have to do it by myself. <laughs> you know? Um, those are kind of those moments that like spark joy. And a lot of people are just like, how on earth can you be that happy? Like doing torturous things in the morning and you know part of it is being with kind of like-minded people yeah. that are there you know you're suffering together but it's for a good cause it's you know it's for longevity and your health yeah. and your fitness and it's it's for that kind of like future self not just for yeah. present self exactly um this has been a super insightful conversation thanks um <laughs> i would love to have you on again thank you i'd love um, to be on uh, if the good people out there want to know about things that you're working on or more about you, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I have a podcast called Your Hidden Talent Podcast. It's on iTunes, Google Play. Um, Go subscribe. Yeah, subscribe, rate and review. Um, if, if the message resonates with you, so you can find me on there. Um, on Instagram, at Bobby Danger. That's B-O-B-B-Y-D-A-N-G-A. -A. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's... Uh, that's it, like the podcast is, is still new, but um, still working on growing it, so we'd love your support. You heard it here first, Bobby Dana, you can find him on Instagram, B-O-B-B-Y-D-A-N-G-A, you can find his uh, podcast, The Hidden Talent, um, subscribe to his podcast, subscribe to ours, um, and hopefully we'll see you back on the couch next week. Um, Stay tuned for more episodes as I talk to a variety of different people on our wandering couch. Till next time, bye. Bye.